when you find a good track, you know it. Like this is one of those no doubters. You can fix fence, you can't create habitat. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. It's pretty tight quarters. They see us, they're gonna check out, so. Take your scope cap off. For some people, hunting season never ends. Staying in the forefront of global conservation leaves business and safety at stake. These three men risk it all for the hunts of a lifetime. True Magnum TV is proudly presented by Zeiss. In West Texas, Bo and Nick Morgan, along with Nevada Grassy, are dialed in on two Audad Rams. Nick and Nevada decide that Nick will take the first shot. Nevada will follow up if there is a chance for a clean shot on the second ram. Hold it, stop. He's down, he's down. <laughs> I was a little excited, I didn't want to say it, but I was pretty excited. Audad are extremely wary. The second ram took off immediately. Nevada will have to wait for his opportunity. But Nick has a nice ram down. Huh? Pretty cool. I want shit I know. A little pr extra pressure made you shoot good, didn't it? Nick's first Audad might have been under coal hunting situations, but that does not dampen his excitement. The men are excited to get a look at his first ram. In Western Montana, James Bryan and Ben Wollers have a short window of time to hunt mountain lion. They've already found a track. Man, I hope I didn't jinx this. This could be exactly the problem. This starts snowing and dumps a bunch of inches in this track. We may lose it before we get this cat in a tree. There we go. He can smell that track from, yeah, the, right? from the truck. That's why he's, <laughs> he's, he knows right where it's at. <laughs> oh, look at him he's hey. going right to the track. Hey. We're not ready quite yet. You're not even get to run the beginning. Is this your number one dog? Um, yeah, pretty much. I've got two that are about the same age that I just use for different purposes. When you really need to put a cat in a tree, he's the one to have do it. If you know if it's if it needs any pressure or it's a runner or anything, he's super fast and driven and not afraid to grab a hold of him on the ground. And you, you're just a lover, aren't you? After the dogs are on a track, you know, you kind of want to say, all right, we got them, we got them. There's a million things that can happen. So I'm just crossing my fingers all the way to the tree or until we hear the dogs barking. That cat's just been all over. Oh, there. they're on him the whole time, huh? Just back and forth. Well, he crossed the river twice. And I don't know, I'll come in and it'll hunt around. And I'll go back and cross the river and hunt around over there. And it's going underneath porches. And the other dang thing. No way. Problem is, this, the track we turned out on was the freshest part of it, but if you go in 100 feet, There's you hit, hit track from last night. You're just living in here. Yeah. 
Basically ran this line right out of a little residential area, one to 10 acre plots down through this valley floor. These cats are holing up in woodsheds and under decks from the people that aren't here for the winter. It's crazy. Probably snatching a house bed every once in a while for lunch. All right, let's go, guys. Dogs are 700 yards. They've been locked down pretty good. They're not even hunting around, so should be treed. Hope so. That'd be good. There's a cat that's been in here that I've run a couple of times that just jumps over and over every time we get to the tree. Just get to see the cat. It fails and runs like heck. He might go a mile, might go five miles, might not catch it that day again. Just runs like most cats never do. There they are. <sighs> Ben's telling me about the jumper. And it's gone one mile, it's gone four miles, it's gone eight miles, it's put him out past dark. Yeah, well, our weather's changing fast. And uh, <laughs> I don't think we got 10 hours in us today. So far, this is just looking too good to be true. I hope this is not the jumper. The excitement of getting closer and closer, you can just feel the excitement coming off that pack. And it just, with every step. Then you're in that moment that doesn't happen, but minutes of your whole life. Oh, there comes, here comes cat. Man, it it jumped. Oh no. <laughs> it's the jumper. Well, hopefully it won't go too far this time. True Magnum TV is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. SnapSafe, security everywhere you want it. Prairie King Ranch. And by True Magnum, the world's best hunting. In South Africa, Rob Dunham is getting down to hunting business. Well, after he gets his shopping in. We're just uh, stopped at a border town near Zimbabwe on our way up. Took advantage of uh, getting some supplies. I travel light, so I end up usually buying some clothes here. I like traveling that light. Um, but more importantly, getting a few supplies because we're going to be pretty skeleton crew. It's not a, even an occupied camp, so it's just going to be us. It's world's biggest red diker. We're at a, a guy's property. He has an orchard down below and an orchard here that off season right now and uh, it's all no fences it's it's all wild animals out of the mountain and I mean we've already seen like three red dikers which are rare and we've only been just driving up this mountain road for not even 10 minutes so I can't wait till tonight because my goal here is to complete my selfish South, Af South African trip without my hunters is is a bush buck. If I got that, I'd be bush buck or a big kudu. I'd be thrilled. So, might get it done here. Just look at this country. It's unbelievable. Northern South Africa's farm country holds a vast number of antelope species many of which have become extinct in other parts of Africa. Private farm ownership through turbulent political times saved many species from complete obliteration. This is one of the nicest properties I've ever seen here in South Africa so rich. So we have a, a couple days here um, before my clients come in, actually a day and a half. We were here last night, seen unbelievable amount of game and a giant kudu, something that I never thought I would really want to take again. But after seeing that, like Alex hunts these animals for a living, he's like, you guys need to take that kudu or I'm coming back myself for them. So, 
Um, but my priority is still a bush buck. It's my nemesis. It's something that I've always wanted to get. And um, it's not that there's a shortage of them where I, I just have never had the opportunity. I've always been with clients who want one. And when I have been hunting, I've never had that opportunity. So it's beautiful. The mountains behind me, it's, it's like gorillas in the mist. It's vast country and it's loaded with game. This guy doesn't hunt, he doesn't let anyone hunt in here. Alec grew up with him and he's letting us look for a bush buck. Having the opportunity to hunt such a variety of species outside of a high fence situation is rare. Rob has lined up another amazing opportunity for true Magnum clients. Kind of thought it was that jumper. Sure enough, he it jumped. It was the jumper. It yeah. is the jumper. As soon as he saw us, he climbed out, bailed right into the dogs, and ran up the canyon. I'm hearing these nightmares about how far this cat goes when it jumps. <laughs> I don't think we're really prepared for eight, ten hours out in this stuff. Our weather's falling apart, and it's getting cold. One of us isn't prepared if we have to go out late. <laughs> you don't like my blue jeans? <laughs> They'll get you a couple hundred yards anyway. <laughs> I noticed you had a strategy there. When I saw Rowdy hanging back, I was like, yeah, he's doing some kind of evil genius stuff. Yeah, I had a plan. I left the fastest dog tied to the truck for a reason. We're about to see why. I hope Ben's trick works. All right, there's the tree again. Well, that could have been a whole lot worse. We got a cat back up in a tree. Ben's trick worked. Years ago, I shot a cat with Ben that was so big. I mean, I could never hope to live long enough to shoot another one bigger than that. I'm not trying to hunt a personal best today. I want a mature cat best for conservation. We have institutional management in the United States. We're so lucky. Professional biologists that study these areas and determine how many of these big predators should be taken out of an area. And a lot of times public sentiment and emotion comes in and disrupts that balance for years at a time in different places around the world because they don't want to see those big predators taken, but it's absolutely positively necessary at the proper level. So this is that anticlimactic moment where we take the critter, take the big predator. There's lots of them here. We trust those biologists to tell us what level it needs to stay at so that everything can flourish. Well, that's the way it works. As a hunter on a cat hunt, you know, sometimes it's really hard work, but that's okay, I can do that. Uh, sometimes you get really excited when you're coming up to that tree and they're barking. That's okay too. But for me, the most nerve wracking moment is that moment when you, got, you need to make the shot. You don't have a very big vital and you've got someone's precious dogs scattered all under that tree and you just don't want to see one of them get hurt. A perfect shot on a mountain lion is critical. Nice shot. Thank you. Nice track, nice morning. <laughs> kind of the same old killing crew here it feels yeah. like. I hear a lot of horror stories about lion hunts when people call us to book. And uh, I have to say that uh, Ben made it look easy again. Ben will say it's luck, but it's not. There's a lot of skill involved in it. There's a lot of know-how. There's a lot of uh, lifetime experience that comes into play when making decisions out in the field to hunt cats. And uh, yeah, it's not luck. Ben makes it look easy. These hunts like this, you just, I mean, they're just so much different than the ungulate hunting that you do, right, which is yeah. great, but this is surreal. Like. These hunts are just big predators hunting big predators and thinking it through and making sure the, the biology is done and the counting is done and the best estimates of harvest are done. And then a handful of people get lucky and get to right. go hunt the animal. And it's, it's, I think it's beautiful, the whole process. Amazing amounts of money go into 
managing our wildlife. And it's kind of all for naught if you only manage a slice of the wildlife. Great, right, definitely. Back in South Africa, Rob is pre-scouting for his clients and hoping to find a bushbuck or kudu for himself in the meantime. But instead, Rob seizes another opportunity. Biggest, biggest nyala I've ever seen. Hold on, put that away. It's the biggest nyala I've ever seen in my life. Okay, one more thing. I want you to shoot it. What? I want you to shoot it. I'm the camera guy. Frick that. Get, give me that frickin' camera. You deserve that one. Come on, it's huge. Hold on, is it going? Yes. There's a younger bull to the left and the side of this. Yes. That monster is feeding almost towards us down this damn hole here. Okay. There is some females, but let's try and get closer. Okay. Let's see if we can get a shot on that monster. That's good. Rob's cameraman and longtime friend Rod Zello now has an opportunity to hunt a Niala. What we'll do is we'll keep low. And we'll move up to this tree. Yes. We'll not use the sticks, but use the tree for a rest. See him there? Yes. Nine thousand two hundred seventy four miles to the west, Nick Morgan is about to get his hands on his first audit. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little excited. I didn't want to say it, but I was pretty excited. A little nog on, huh? First oodad. Huh? Pretty cool, huh? Look at the scratch down his face. Buddy. I don't always agree with just being so hard on a species, but they're an invasive species, and you gotta you, you gotta control it where you're desert sheep. They they say disease goes back and forth, or at least these are more aggressive. They'll run them off of water. Whatever the reasons they come up with, they're, they're, the management plan says. No owl dad where we got desert sheep. They're invasive species. So they're, they're a great trophy animal. And it's really hard for me to hunt them as an invasive species as opposed to a trophy animal. I've hunted them every time I've really got after hunting them. They're a trophy to me. I bring that, you know. Someone, one of the hunters was in, uh, the deer hunters was in, saw some sheep. The tree's not gonna work now, you can use my shot. 